you about success, because it's something I'm really passionate about. I've learned a lot about success over the years, what it means and what it doesn't mean. Um, and I want to share with you five basic points about success. The first thing is, what is success? The second thing, what is your potential for success? The third thing I want to share with you today is, I'm going to share with you the one thing that stands between you and the success you really desire. The one thing. That long is what we The fourth thing is how to retrain your brain for success. And the fifth thing is, I'm going to give you a brief demonstration, an interactive demonstration of EFT. Okay, so first of all, what is success? And when we say success, you know, it comes up all kinds of images. We're bombarded with images and thoughts about success and ideas. And I believe it means different things for different people. And I think it's critical that you determine for yourself what success means to you in every area of your life. Not just your business, but your relationships, your health and well-being, your spiritual life, your financial life, every area of your life. And what I find is that a lot of people are um, chasing after someone else's idea of success. And that is a, a struggle, it's an upstream struggle. But when you determine what your success means to you, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. When you can get aligned with that, you're going to have a much easier time creating that success. It will come to you in ways that you never even imagined. So when I was 27 years old, which was a long time ago, 30 years ago, I lived in Honolulu, which is where I was raised. I was an executive manager. I made $60,000 a year. I wore beautiful clothes and shoes, and I drove a BMW. This is not, I'm making this up. I was married to a really handsome man, and we owned a house on a hill overlooking the ocean. And I was miserable. I was inside, that, that's the, the external success that I thought I was supposed to chase after. But inside, I was miserable. And I'll tell you that I was also a functioning alcoholic which is a nice way of saying I was a drunk with a job in a car. I was a drug addict, and I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. Now, I know some of you kind of know that about me, and some of you don't. And, and I know standing up here, it, it's hard to believe I'm not that person anymore. But um, obviously, I wasn't successful. I had the trappings. They didn't mean anything. The, in, the inside was empty and all. So fortunately, I got sober a few years later, and on that night, um, when I got, went to my first AA meeting, my life's trajectory changed from this direction, literally to this direction. I made a quantum leap in one time. I made a decision to change the tra trajectory of my life, and I consider anything I've done since then to be a success. In fact, I'm mean, here as a success. But now the work that I do, brings me such a much more, a, a, a much stronger feeling of success. I mean, I always feel successful when I work with clients. Some of my favorite stories are funny. A woman came to me who wanted to get divorced from her husband, and within an hour, within an hour of doing what I do, it wasn't me, I just helped her to get a new perspective. She had been blaming her husband because he just didn't put as much effort into the relationship as she did. So I worked so hard at this relationship, I worked so hard at this relationship, and he just doesn't work hard at the relationship. And I said, does he listen to you? And she says, yes, and he hears everything I say, but he doesn't work hard at the relationship. So we started doing a little tapping, and it turns out her, her negative belief was that relationships are supposed to be hard. Mm -hmm. And so as we tapped, she said, we tapped it out. I think relationships should be hard. He makes them so easy. I hate that. You know? <laughs> and and she, she laughed, just like you do. And these were words that she had given me. I just repeated them back to her. And she laughed, I swear, 10 years, melted off of her face. And she went home and rekindled her relationship. And she's about to have her second child in just a few days. Don't stick around and help about any of this talk, you'll know. You are greater than you 
think you are. And you know that there are things calling you to be greater. And you want to do those things, but sometimes you get stuck. And you just go, I don't know about you, but if you've ever felt bewildered, like, I know I want to do that, I know I want to do that, I know I want to do that, why can't I do that? And we're going to dive into that in just a second. Um, first of all, it's not your fault. You're not to blame, and you're not doomed to failure. I promise you're not doomed to failure in any area of your life, no matter what. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is what is that one thing that stands between you and your success, whatever you desire. The one thing is your limiting beliefs. Your limiting beliefs. Now, you may have lots of limiting beliefs, but it is one thing that stands between you and your success. And, and I can prove it over and over and over again. And I want to tell you, what is a belief? A belief is simply a thought that we think over and over again. And a limiting belief has a really uh, uh, powerful emotional charge with it, usually brought on by experiences and memories from early in our lives. Most of your beliefs were programmed into you at a very early age before you had the brain power to say, I don't believe that. I'm awesome. I don't suck. I'm not stupid. You know, all the things that we should argue about, but we don't, because when you're really young, you do not have the brain power to do that. You do not have a logical uh, functioning brain at, at four or five years old. So you just download everything, whether it's said to you expressly or implied to you. So implicit learning, and explicit learning, you're just downloading it all. And I guarantee we all carry these things forward into our lives. So I always tell people when you get into a, a business meeting and people are acting kind of ridiculous, it's because there are a bunch of four year olds in that room. We just happen to be an adult body. We, we haven't learned how to mature our emotions. And up until recently, we didn't know how to retrain our brain. But now we have the technology, and it's really quite simple. Um, and it requires practice, so it's easy to learn. Uh, you can do some of the work yourself. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Uh, the reason I recommend working with someone else, whether it's me or another EFT practitioner, find somebody you can teach it to your friend and work together. But the instructions for the box that you have put yourself in are on the outside of the box. And so you need someone to help you find, read the instructions, tell you how to get out of the box you're in. And once you get out, you can look back and go, oh my god, I can't believe life was stuck in that box all the time. It's very pretty. Your life will change. So if you can eliminate one uh, negative, limiting belief, many things will change. If you can eliminate two or three, you will find your life on a new trajectory. And if you can change or eliminate four or five limiting beliefs that you've had, oh my god, the universe will just open up and stuff will start flowing to you. All you have to do is ask, but you've got to get your limiting beliefs out of the way. I'm a very spiritual person, and I try not to keep that a secret anymore. So I promised my, my friend Leslie, no longer was I going to keep my spiritual life a secret. Um, but you don't have to be spiritual to do this work. This is not this is scientific stuff I'm going to show you. So let's see, did I convert to three, four, four? Okay. So how do we train your brain for success? Um, you got to clear out the limiting beliefs. Now, um, those limiting beliefs are there for a reason. I mean, the, our reaction to them is there for a reason. When you bump up against the limiting belief, and, and I guarantee you all bumped up against one during this lunch at some point. Somebody said something that triggered you, like Social Security. You know. <laughs> Sorry, but it, it's one of those things that triggers our limiting belief. I encourage you to take a moment, you can put that on your list or whatever, but um, when you bump up against a limiting belief like that, what happens is you're, there's a very ancient part of your brain, and it's called the amygdala, and it's where all of your emotions come from. And your mind gets this thought about social security and money and fear and the future, and it sends a signal to the amygdala, and this all happens way faster than you can think about it. And your amygdala sends out this safety mechanism, it says, it goes into fight, flight, or freeze mode. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I get into fight, flight, or freeze more often than I'd like, but I'm very aware of it and I know what to do about it. Most people are in fight, flight, or freeze pretty much all the time now, because the brain won't shut that mechanism off until the, the danger of Social Security 
or lack of is, is taken care of. Now, that's a long time away. That, that 20 years from now is a long time to be in flight, fight, fight, flight, or freeze. And fight, flight, or freeze basically shuts down your creative brain. Takes all the blood out of your brain, gets you ready to fight, flight, or freeze. And most of us do, well, I, I, a lot of us do freeze, mostly because we were taught early on when the teacher gets mad and you feel uncomfortable. No, you can't leave the classroom and no, you can't talk back to the teacher. So I said, we just freeze. We do a lot of freeze. So if you've ever been, had that experience where suddenly your brain stops functioning, maybe you were asked to stand up at a microphone and suddenly, what's my name? <laughs> what's the name of my company? What was I going to say? And now it gets dry and your heart's pounding. That's fight, flight, or freeze. That's a, it's, a, it's a safety mechanism. But it's not really keeping us safe anymore. It's keeping us limited. We don't often have dangers like our ancient ancestors had. We don't have tigers that are going to jump out of the bushes and kill us. And, and really, the kind of real danger that we face is minimal in the 21st century, especially in the West, you know, but, but around the world. Most places, it's relatively safe. I don't know about you, but I have not had to fight for food. In my entire life, I've never been shattered. <laughs> I, 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 I try to be the neighbors that I didn't like, but I just didn't have to fight them. I, no, no spears or guns were involved. Well, one side there was a shooting in my neighborhood, but you know, they weren't shooting at me. And um, um, so, so anyway, we live in a relatively safe environment, but your brain is not a difference between a real danger and a perceived danger. And if ever in your life, it has been uncomfortable for you to stand up in front of a room and talk because somebody laughed or somebody didn't like what you had to say. Your brain remembers that and says, this is dangerous, don't do that. And the other thing is that that, that ancient mechanism doesn't want you to stand out, be different, be greater. Um, and that's because back then you had to be part of the tribe and be got kicked out and die. But nowadays, we want to stand out, we want to be greater, we want to be unique. And so, our, but our brain has not kept up. Okay, so it's imperative, in my opinion, that as many people as possible start doing this work because we need to upgrade the programming of our brain. It's like getting a, a, an upgrade on your computer to new operating software. And that's basically what I do. And that's what my program, Retrain Your Brain for Success, is about. It's to help you take out the garbage that's stuck in your brain, it's been there a long time, you don't even know it's there and replace it with stuff that's really going to support you to move forward. So, how much time do I have? Okay, change the plan, but I can do that. I was going to do some tapping, but... Okay, all right, change the plan. On that sheet of paper, on the back, that little thing, or you can just do it on any piece of paper, I want you to write it down a limiting belief that you have about yourself. So to find a limiting belief, the easiest thing you can say is, to me, the easiest way to do it, I've got some suggestions on the back of that card. Check one, just one. Find a limiting belief in the conditions. If you don't have something on that list, list that triggers you, make one up, put another one. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is say, I really love myself, except. And whatever you say after accept, that's a limiting belief, whatever, whatever triggers you, write it down real quick. And I want you to sense into what you're looking at, the, the thing you checked or what you wrote down. I just want you to sense into it and notice how much intensity there is. How much do I believe it? How much do I feel it? Um, how true is that for me right here, right now? And I want you to scale that on a 1 to 10 scale. 1 being not very triggered and 10 being totally like this is totally a belief I have. And really, if you have a 10 belief, that's the one you want to put down because we're going to see if we can get to the root of it. If, at the end of this, this, this is totally, you don't have to participate. There's no danger involved. But if you get emotionally triggered, um, okay, if you get emotionally triggered and I don't calm you down, come and see me, ask her, I'll give you calm you if you don't want Okay, so here's what I want you to do, and this is really great. Follow along the best you can. Tap on these meridian tap, tapping points that you're going to come really simple. Tapping, we start on this point called the karate jump point. It's the fleshy, soft side of your hand where you would do a karate jump point, you know, on a brick or whatever. I wouldn't, but it's a good one. Um, this is the most powerful point. If you don't get any of the other ones, just keep doing this. And whenever you're triggered, you'll see me doing this all the time. Whenever you're triggered, you can feel that fight, fight, or freeze. This sends, scientifically proven, to send a calming signal to that amygdala. And it either slows down and 
and oftentimes shuts off the fight, flight, or freeze response. Now, the fight, flight, or freeze response has to be shut off a lot. So this can be it. Okay, so just, we're going to say some phrases. They may sound kind of different to you, but just repeat after me as a group. And then we'll move to some different category points. So, say, even though I have this limiting belief, even though I have this limiting belief, and I've been carrying it around for a long time. I've been carrying it around for a long time. It is ingrained in every cell of my body. It is ingrained in every cell of my body. And I have believed it. And I have believed it. And I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. And we can go into more detail with that, but I'm going to go to this next point. Simply just tap on the top of your head and say this limiting belief. This is limiting belief. And on your eyebrow, right in your inner eyebrow, just say, I thought I had to hold on to it. I thought I had to hold on to it. On the side of the eye, part of me thought it was keeping me safe. Part of me thought it was keeping me safe. And under the eye. But it's really limiting me. But it's really limiting me. And when I think, and right under your nose, and just say, when I think about this limiting belief, when I think about this limiting belief, I can feel it in every cell of my body. I can feel it in every cell of my body. And on the collarbone, you can say, I've been carrying this thing around as long as I can remember. I've been carrying this thing around as long as I can remember. Under the arm, and I don't want to believe it anymore. I don't but it's hard to let go. But it's hard to let go. Somebody gave me this belief. Somebody gave me this belief. And I believe them. And I believe them. And somebody might not like it if I let go of this belief. Somebody might not like it if I let go of this belief. But I'm not going to like it if I hold on to it. But I'm not going to like it if I hold on to it. And, and I'm really starting to, to love and accept myself. And I'm really starting to love and accept myself. And I want to let this belief go. Thank you very much.